Whether he was playing country, rhythm and blues, or rock and roll, he always played with his own unique style, often described as genius. Ray Charles Robinson was born in 1930 in Albany, Georgia. His music career started early. It was so normal for me, uh, so natural to me. Even when I was three years old, I would, I would go and, and jump on Mr. Wiley Pittman's piano stool and hit all the keys with all my fingers and everything. By the age of seven, he was completely blind due to glaucoma. My mom was very, very conscientious. I mean, she, she saved me from a lot of the trauma that I probably would have had because she knew I was going to lose my sight, so she started preparing me. Ray was studying music at the St. Augustine School for the Deaf and Blind when at 15, after his mother passed away, he quit to pursue music professionally. He headed to Seattle and dropped the Robinson from his name to avoid confusion with Sugar Ray Robinson. I saved my little money. I had about $900. And I've always had this little thing in the back of my mind that I can, I can do it. I can. I can make it. You know, it may take me a little time. I might, I might not do it today. After spending the early part of his career as a carbon copy of his idol, Nat King Cole, Ray began developing his own style, a style that would soon cross many different genres. Bringing together the feeling and sound of gospel set to secular music, in 1955, he scored a number one R&B hit with I Got a Woman. He continued to rattle off a string of R&B hits, but really crossed over and captured white America in 1959 with What I'd Say. It was a top 10 pop hit and was one of his final singles with Atlantic. When Ray Charles started taking these gospel songs and translating them into pop songs, people just went crazy. He took this music that had really been a part of the black church for generations and put it on the stage and he put it on the radio. Soon, Ray moved to ABC for artistic creative control and in 1960 released the album The Genius Hits the Road, featuring his hit single Georgia On My Mind, which became Georgia's state song in 1979. Now tagged with the label The Genius, he pulled off an incredible feat when he recorded the huge country hit I Can't Stop Loving You off of his critically acclaimed album Modern Sounds in Country and Western Music. He'd always been eclectic, but succeeding in country was truly impressive. When you talk to musicians, they become rapturous when they talk about Ray Charles because his contribution was so enormous and in so many distinctive ways. Things were going better than he could have ever dreamed, but he lost some career momentum when he was busted for heroin in 1965. He dealt with addiction to the drug for nearly 20 years. Though Charles continued to release music through the 70s and the 80s, his best creative days seemed to be behind him. Yet a new generation of fans were being introduced to Charles through his appearance in the film The Blues Brothers in 1980 and his popular Diet Pepsi ads of the early 90s. He remained in the public eye, performing and often being honored for his career achievements right up until he died from liver disease at age 73 in 2004. In 2004, an uncanny Oscar-winning performance by Jamie Foxx in the biopic Ray sparked a renewed interest in the American treasure Ray Charles. The posthumously released duet album Genius Loves Company was nominated for 10 Grammys and Charles took home five. It became the best-selling album of his career. He was a great songwriter, just an extraordinary singer, great piano player. You know, somebody who can move in and out of the worlds of jazz, and soul, and gospel, popular music, country music, of course. I mean, the guy just did not recognize any musical boundaries. And consequently, so many different audiences came to him in the course of his career.